I'm currently in 3D Coat build 4.9.12, and you may have noticed in some of the recent builds that there is a different layout structure in the Sculpt workspace. And that is to incorporate the layer panel as well as the proxy slider into the default user interface and place it where it makes most sense. You might think of the Vox Tree panel as a hierarchy or an outliner panel, if you will, whereas the layer panel stores paint and sculpt information. The layer panel that you see here is exact same one that you find in the paint workspace. If I hide this sculpt layer where I've already done some tweaking, you can see the changes. I can also unhide that and maybe change the value in the depth channel to about half, and that way it's blending between the original state and this scope layer. Depending on the complexity of your model, oftentimes you can scrub this depth slider and see it interactively, but there was quite a bit of work done on this one layer, so that's why it may be a little bit slow. Plus, it's also a 16 million poly model, so uh, let's put that back at 100%. Now let's go ahead and talk about the proxy slider. It's part of the multi-resolution system in 3D Coats Sculpt workspace, which emulates subdivision levels in other sculpting applications. For example, in those applications, if you wanted to use the Move tool or something that makes large-scale transformations, then you typically would want to step down to a lower subdivision level and have that propagated back up to your highest level. In 3D Coat, that is done through the multi-resolution workflow. What 3D Coat is going to do is it's going to take whatever object I have selected. When I click the cache disk icon, it will store the model in its current state on the hard drive, and in its place, it will leave a lower resolution proxy. Its resolution can be pre-selected here using the proxy slider. As you drag your slider to the left, it will decrease the resolution of the proxy. 3D Coat uses decimation, but it also can use simple reduction. The difference is decimation is going to have to evaluate the mesh, look for areas where it needs to provide a higher level of polygonal density to keep sharp creases or hard edges and details, things of that sort. But in other areas where it doesn't need quite as much, it will be a lower degree of polygonal density. That's really the only drawback to using this particular approach because it does take a little bit longer to calculate when you want to step down to a lower resolution level. The plus side of that trade-off is that you can do this at any given point, no matter where you are on your model, whether it's the early stage, late stage, whether you switch to voxel mode or surface mode and done some dynamic tessellation work, it doesn't matter. In other applications, you would lose your subdivision levels whenever you employ alternate remeshing algorithms. In 3D Coat, that's not a problem whatsoever. You never have to worry about losing your subdivision levels because you can always step down to a lower resolution proxy at any given point. When you use reduction, it's much faster than with decimation because, again, decimation has to perform an evaluation of the mesh, whereas reduction does not have to make that calculation. Let's go ahead and choose reduction on this object. I'll just go ahead and click the cache to disk icon. And that's it. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I can judge by looking at the wireframe that it's a much lower resolution. I can also see the new poly count at the bottom of the UI in the status bar. So if I wanted to use something like the Move tool, the performance is very robust. Okay, so I'll undo. Whatever changes I may make while I'm in proxy mode, 3D Coat will store that to the selected scope layer. And it's probably a good idea to create a new and separate one just for the changes made during this stage. I'll now scrub the proxy slider to the left to reduce it even further. And you'll notice it gives me a preview of the poly count when I switch. This time I do not have to click the cache disk icon because it's already in a cache state. So it's going to go from 4 million down to about 1 million. Okay, so it took about 10 seconds. All right. Let me go ahead and make one quick edit here. Maybe I want to pull that trap muscle up just a bit.
Okay. Now what I want to do is go ahead and click that cache to disk icon again, and it's going to send me back to the original, and it's going to essentially project or translate the changes from the proxy object back to the original. And I have that information stored right here. So you can see the change. If I want, uh, again, I can blend that. And watch the changes. I can go above 100 as well if I need. Okay, so that's a quick look at the proxy slider and the layer panel that's now been docked inside of 3D Coats Scope Workspace. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.